Hello! Welcome back to Kira's Workshop. If you remember, on the very first official episode of Make It Fashion, I told you that the poles were very close between Shigo and Howl, and a lot of you were really into the idea of a Howl-inspired doll. So here we are. Today I'm making a 2021 version of the very egotistical, but also kind of charming wizard Howl Jenkins Pendragon. Yes, black hair Howl. But before I begin this video especially, I must give you the generic Make It Fashion disclaimer. This is not a recreation of the character. This character is not Howl. My concept for this 2021 Howl was to make him a very edgy guy. I wanted him to look like a runway model, with a Victor and Rolf slash Valentino vibe. Come with me, let's dive into this project, shall we? First of all, the base. Howl to me has this slightly androgynous vibe. He's also very vain, and I want to keep that conceited energy. So I'm using a Dexter Charming doll. Great profile, great bone structure. First, drawing the edge of the iris with dark blue, and then filling them with a lighter tone. Howl is very seductive, so I want his eyes to be very powerful and enchanting. Like every other male doll that I've done, I'm mixing red and pink pastel to add a natural color to the lips. Later, with a black pencil, I'm darkening the lights of the eyes ever so slightly. I don't want him to look like he's wearing eyeliner. Then, using a dark grey pastel, I'm adding the brows. Not too thin, but not too thick either. seal everything and with a light pink pencil, I'm drawing the lip creases. This also helps me to tone down the pastels. I usually draw the creases with pink and a very light grey, to create some dimension. After that, I'm using a mid-blue tone to add texture to the irises, and add the initial pupil with a navy blue. I want him to have a very subtle makeup, which is brown shadow on the inner and outer corner of the upper lids, and some red on the lower lids. Off camera, I'll fill the scleras with white and draw the pupil with black. Now it's time to bring those eyes to life. New technique add shadow on the top of the sclera with dark grey. And the iris will get the shadow with black. Add the catch lights to seal the deal. Now, I want this dude to have lots of tattoos, so I need the help of Kiro, the Photoshop expert, for this. Hello, Kiro, the Photoshop expert. Alrighty, first of all, just like with the Orville Peck doll, I took pictures of the doll and created a new file with the exact height of the body. First, I need to place the tattoos digitally, so that I know how they'll look, and the size they will be. And yes, all the tattoos are from characters from Studio Ghibli. I also added some effects to the tattoos, so that I can have a slight idea of how they look on top of the plastic. Once everything is scaled correctly, I'm transferring them to an A4 size canvas, and duplicate all the images in case I've messed something up while placing them. Print them on the decal paper, let them dry, and now I proceed to seal the printed tattoos. By being the most unconscious human ever, and intoxicating my already extremely dry grass. 3 to 4 layers in case you were wondering. Once I apologize to Mother Earth, and after the sealant dries, we have our tattoos ready for action. I'm going to cut them, one by one, and try to leave the least amount of edge as possible. Thanks for the help, Photoshop expert Kiro. Now time to place the tattoos. Here I have my sanded down body and my container with warm water. Let the decal paper soak for a few seconds. Pick it up very gently. Place them. And carefully remove the white paper from the decal. The decals will create air and water bubbles due to the curves of the body. So I'm trying to remove them with my fingers. 
But if you try this, be very careful. The decals are sticky, and you might ruin them if you touch them too much with your fingers. That's why I recommend you to use a Q-tip to remove the bubbles. The cotton of the Q-tip absorbs the water, and by doing this, you reduce the chances of accidentally lift the decals from the plastic. Also, sounding down the body creates a very texture for the decals to really stick. To continue with the rest of the tattoos, I'm looking at my photo reference. The downside of working with decals is that even though the material is flexible, it will create wrinkles where there are very pronounced curves. The tattoos I placed on the ribs, arms, and chest got very nasty wrinkles. But let's pretend they are scars. Honestly, I prefer using decals, because I'm not that good at drawing, and it's way faster. So, time for a little tattoo tour. On the right side, we have Princess Mononoke and Moro on the shoulder, and two Kodamas. On the lower arm, the diamond pattern from Soul Jacket. A Totoro face inside the bicep. On the ribs, Ponyo's mother, Grandma Mare and some of her sisters, that are swimming up to the oblique. Right on the center of the chest, a very romantic one of Sophie and Hal. On the left side, we have Naoko and Jiro from The Wind Rises. Our creepy friend Konashi on the shoulder. Calcifer inside the bicep. On the lower arm, some Susu Watari and a very cute Gigi. Of course, I saved the best for last. The back needs a huge tattoo, and no one better for this than Haku's dragon form. Placing this tattoo was very nerve-wracking. But I'm so happy with how it looks. Off camera, I'll blush the body. Time for clothes. I told you. Basic patterns are a must for everything. I'm sticking with the original color palette, but if I want to make it very stylish, I must change the silhouette. Since he's got a lot of tattoos on the arms, I'm making a white sleeveless v-neck shirt, but also avoiding to make it look like a tank top. For the pants, there are not many ways to go. So I took my basic, and made them shorter, 3 eighths of an inch above the ankle. And this is how they look. To be honest, I didn't like them at all. They are kind of baggy, and the fit on the back is very sloppy, so I decided to repeat them off camera. So this is how the shirt looks, and the new pants fit him very nicely. Looking at how Mattel clothes are sewn helps you a lot to figure out the patterns. And now to the most iconic piece of clothing, the coat slash jacket. Hal always uses his jacket as a cape, and following the runway model by by one might told to have, I decided to get rid of the sleeves and just make a cape. I'm following the same process I did on my Ashley T trench cape, where I extend the shoulders of the pattern and then connect it with a straight line to the bottom. This is a very simple pattern, but I believe it looks very clean and elegant. Once done, I'm going to cut both patterns on this pink fabric. I know that Hull's jacket is dark grey on the back, but since the cape is longer and has no sleeves, the color block would have looked very harsh. I also added a satin yellow ribbon to cover the seams. It looks kind of stiff, but I absolutely love the silhouette. And of course, it wouldn't be a whole cape without the diamond pattern. So with a piece of my trusty black faux leather, I'm drawing lines with my white chalk pencil, with a separation of half an inch. Once done, I'll turn around the fabric and draw opposite lines to make the diamonds. And well, once I have them all, I'll just grab my Yoohoo and glue them on place. I don't want the diamonds to cover the cape entirely, so I'm just adding some on the front, but of course making them symmetrical. The original jacket is black on the back and doesn't have any diamonds, but I'm giving it a pattern as well, but this time creating some kind of a gradient.
and it's done. Even though this is a very different take on the jacket, I really love it. The contrast of the fabric and the leather diamonds look really cool, and I especially love how the symmetry looks on the back. Story time. I envisioned this dude to live in our time. I believe 2021 Hal would have dyed his hair, different from blonde or black, so I went for a very edgy look. I decided to reroute the head with half platinum and half black, before the face up. I trimmed down the hair, but I began having second thoughts. And then I saw the face and the hair together. Ooh. Barf! I hate it. I don't think it looks bad, but it doesn't look good either. I mean, I know I said I was perceiving Hal as an androgynous guy, but this is way too much. And ended up looking like a goth boy. And that's not the aesthetic I was looking for. It also low-key looks more like a Sephiroth to me. So, after having a small mental breakdown, crying a little, complaining about my choices with some of my friends, and staring at the doll for quite a long time, I decided to chop off his mane and paint the silver hair black. So here we are. The moment of truth. The big event. The big reveal. 2021 Howl Closing Cycles. SUCCESS! I patched all the missing hair with Flock, giving him a buzz cut on one side. The painted silver hair gives him a very special glow, and I'm not mad about it. Of course, I needed to make him his iconic green earrings, gave him a helix piercing, and his blue crystal necklace. This was a very good decision. The haircut fits the character so much more. Time for the shoes to grab this up. First, I thought of giving him some black loafers, but eh, lame. So I thought, I've never done sandals before, so sandals will be. But not your regular lazy ass home sandals that some disgustingly use with socks. To begin with it, I cut a separation between the big and the index toes. I trace one foot on a piece of paper and then create a heel with it. Trace both patterns on foam foam. This will be the sole. This times two. One of them inverse, of course. And also, using the foot pattern, I'll trace it on leather as well. I'll glue the leather piece on the foam foam. And the heel to the sole. But not yet. Next, I place the foot on the leather. And mark where the separation of the toes is. Cut it. And insert a very thin strip of leather through it. Pull it to secure. Then I'll put it on the foot and begin wrapping up the strip. This is just an example. I actually cut the strip in pieces and glue them individually while I was placing them, one by one. Once done, I'll glue on the sole and then the heel. And this is how they turn out. The leather is a little bit shiny, because I give it two coats of a clear matte acrylic paint, so that it doesn't stain the plastic, and I also painted the soles black. I am so happy with how they look. And well, with this, our fashion haul is done. Thank you so much for suggesting this character. Even though he looks very different from the original one, I am extremely happy with how he looks. What do you think about my version of Hal? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring, subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next time. Kira out.